In my last video about the Ottomans, I mentioned some of the mistakes that Kara Mustafa Pasha, the Ottoman commander, committed during the Battle of Vienna. Well, one of his biggest mistakes was the placement of his elite unit, the prestigious Janissary Corp. Upon doing research for that video, I found the Janissaries to be a truly fascinating group. From things like how they were trained and how they fought, to simply their daily lives. I found it all so intriguing. So let's talk about them. Though it's a bit unclear, most historians can agree that the Janissary Corp was established by Murad I in an attempt to create a strong standing army that was loyal to only him. Utilizing the tax where one-fifth of all slaves would be the sultans, Murad created the first Janissary Corp in 1363 out of these slaves. There isn't much information regarding how this early form of Janissary Corp were trained, or how many there were, but it most likely followed a similar system of the later and more well-known Janissaries, with their numbers being below 1000. Later in the mid-1380s, the more well-known system of Devshirm was adopted. Under this system, young Christian boys between the ages of 8 to 20, usually Balkan, would be separated from their parents, converted to Islam, and then trained to be Janissaries. The boys would be given to a Turkish family so they could learn the Turkish language and customs. They would then be transferred to the Enderun school, where for the next 6-7 to seven years, they would be taught in a wide array of subjects, ranging from the arts to math and science and all the way to the study of warfare. So just imagine your 5th period class being replaced with lessons on how to fight and kill. Sounds fun, doesn't it? Anyway, if they couldn't meet the standards and goals set for them, they would join the military, while those that went above and beyond would become government officials. Before we go any further, I would just like to quickly mention that even though the early Janissaries were slaves, it was a vastly different system of slavery when you compare it to the American slaves. The American system is that of chattel slavery, basically meaning that one could be sold, bought, and inherited as if they were nothing but property. On the contrary, even though Janissaries were barred from marrying, learning another trade, or growing their beards, they were given salaries as well as pensions upon retirement. They could gain first class citizenships, and they were given formal and military education. This strict discipline of being loyal to only the Sultan mixed with their religious fervor is what helped make them the elite soldiers that they were. As a matter of fact, not all of the boys would be trained to be soldiers. Some would be trained to be civil servants. And due to the meritocracy of the Ottoman Empire, they were able to move up the ladder. To really illustrate this, one of the most powerful Grand Viziers, Sokulu Mehmed Pasha, was the de facto ruler of the Ottoman Empire for 15 years, and he was a Bosnian that was taken from his family. Don't get me wrong though, the Ottomans' policy was clearly wrong and would never fly these days. In fact, even Islamic scholars at the time criticized the Devshirm system, mentioning how its slavery of Christians was prohibited in Islamic law. People at the time knew this was wrong and called the Sultan out on it, but the most common reply they would get back is that these boys were given better lives than anything they could have had if they stayed with their families. This isn't a total lie. Some parents did give up their children in hopes that they could receive a better life, but for the most part were kidnapped. Now fast forward to the mid 17th century and the practice formally ended due to a lack of manpower and a relaxation of the strict rules placed upon the Janissaries. Free Muslims were now joining the court, Janissaries could now marry, and they could finally grow the manly beards they've always wanted. Now moving on from their upbringing, what made the Janissaries so effective was their discipline and their training in all forms of combat. Their signature weapon was a bow, but they would also carry a sword and a dagger for close quarter combat. In the mid 15th century, the Janissaries would be one of the first troops to adopt gunpowder muskets. By the first half of the 16th century, 60% 60 of the Janissaries would be equipped with muskets, while the remaining 40% would still be equipped with their powerful composite bows. Their corps will be split into three sections, the front lines, the bodyguards of the sultan, and the rear. The janissaries would be led by the commander of the corps, called an aga. Their elite training mixed with tactics such as the Wattenberg made them a key aspect of Ottoman military success. For instance, at the Battle of Mokas, the janissaries had effectively destroyed the Hungarian charge. At the siege of Constantinople, it were the janissaries that led the charge. To say that the janissaries played a role in Ottoman success would be an understatement. When they weren't busy destroying ancient empires, the Janissaries would be employed as peacetime civil servants. They would be guards, police officers, and firemen. Just imagine accidentally setting off your smoke alarm, and a Navy SEAL breaks down your door asking where's the fire, or the CIA solving some Scooby-Doo type mysteries, just to find out it was Old Man Jenkins again. They also became a major force in Ottoman politics. Ottoman sultans would try to counterbalance the Turkish aristocrats by appointing the Janissary officers into powerful government offices. The political strategy of the Sultan was an old one, divide and conquer. However, as the Janissaries started to realize how powerful they were becoming, they started to flex their muscles more and more. During the 16th century, 
more and more Ottomans started to abuse their power. They opened up shops and forced suppliers to give them massive discounts, they stole from the general public, and they scammed the state by inflating the numbers of Janissaries so that the officers would receive double the pay. The worst part about all this? Their effective military strength was declining due to the corruption. Throughout the next few centuries, the Janissaries would depose Sultan after Sultan to make sure that there was no one who could challenge them. In a way, the Janissary Corp of the 17th to the 19th century could be accurately compared to the Praetorian Guard of the Western Roman Empire. Both military organizations had started out as a prestigious and effective military unit and the ruler's bodyguard. Over time, they would command a great amount of power over the throne of their respective countries. While in the beginning, these military organizations were vital for military success, they would eventually become a determinant for the state. Any reform that threatened them had to be met with brutal execution. Heck, in both places, if you wanted to be the ruler, you would have to pay a bribe to these soldiers. To really illustrate how bad the Janissaries had become, in 1807, Salem III, seeing the desperate state that his country was in, prompted to enact reforms to westernize the country. After establishing a new army, which he for some reason wanted to name the New Order, like, come on man, just put up a sign that says nothing to see here, Janissaries. Alright, whatever. After establishing this army, the Janissary court marched onto the throne and deposed them, putting his cousin Mustafa IV on the throne, and throwing him into the palace prison with his brother Mahmud II. After Mustafa was given the throne, the Janissaries went off to pillage Istanbul. In 1808, the Grand Vizier tried to put Selim back on the throne, but Mustafa had killed him and threw his body on the courtyard. Thinking that both brothers are now dead, the Grand Vizier started to criticize Mustafa, and in the middle of his roast, Mahmud just walks out like, Hey, what's up guys? After this, Mustafa is dethroned and once again thrown in jail, with Mahmud II becoming the new sultan. After spending some quality bro time in jail, Mahmud adopts the reformist beliefs of his now deceased brother, but before he can enact them, the Janissaries once again storm the palace. Mahmud kills Mustafa, leaving him as the only house of Osman. Realizing the threat of the Janissaries, he carefully assigns his men to key political and military positions, until June 1826, where he enacts his master plan. Upon the assembly of a new military standing army, the Janissary units revolt. Mahmud had already predicted this, and had his loyal military officials bombard the Janissary headquarters with artillery. Over 4,000 Janissaries would die in this artillery barrage, in what came to be known as the Auspicious Incident. The prominent Janissary corps of almost 500 years would be disbanded, forever gone into the annals of history. The Janissary Corps is one of the most fascinating figures of Ottoman history. This establishment that had given the Ottomans their greatest victories had in its later years turned to one that was hampering its success. What was once an army of slaves had turned into an aristocratic class of the ruling elite. Though their end had allowed the Sultan to hold out a bit longer, they too met the same fate as the Janissaries almost 100 years later when they were disbanded by a more western and modernized version. Whatever you may think about them, you have to admit, they are pretty interesting. So that's it for the Janissaries. Make sure to tell me what you think about the video and leave a comment down below about what you would like me to cover next time. Other than that, I'll catch you in the next video.